As the world is getting back on its feet when it comes to the economic side of things, we are meeting one of the leading companies here in the United Arab Emirates and understand how the pandemic was for them. We're meeting the founder and chairman of the Danube Group, Mr. Rizwan Sajan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Abdul Karim. It was a pleasure uh, to have you with us. Um, we'd like to first start talking about Danube Group as a company which was grown following a political crisis, let, let alone the economic situation aside. Uh, it emerged after the Iraq war, the Iraq crisis. Talk to us about the early days of Danube and how it came to, into being. Uh, uh, well, I came here after the Iraq crisis, which Kuwait and Iraq crisis, and um, at that particular time, from straight away from Mumbai, I landed over here. Uh, started working with one of my friend OEF. I worked there for one year and then we started this company Danube Building Material. Uh, so at that time we never had any money to start this company. The little money which I had was 100,000 dirham which I had saved uh, over the years when I was working. Uh, and that with that we started one brokerage company. Uh, brokerage means uh, indenting company uh, where somebody wants to buy and somebody wants to sell and I, could, I would get that one or two percent commission uh, on that particular thing. Uh, the only thing which I had was the contact which I had created uh, during my Kuwait days where we uh, all the suppliers uh, so that reputation that credibility which was built over the years was excellent. In a, in a brokerage normally you earn one or two percent but when you uh, are doing trading you started making 10 to 15 percent so I started realizing that this is definitely a better business than doing a brokerage business. But the only challenge was the money, which means how to get the money from the uh, banks and all that. But with this uh, little bit of uh, business, which I was able to do on the consignment basis, the first bank that I approached was Habib Bank Gage Dhiruj. Uh, with some uh, little bit of hard work, we got managed to get a healthy facility of 500,000 dirhams. That was my first healthy facility. Uh, after that, uh, we got an LC facility from Habi, uh, from HSBC, which was of 2 million dirhams. And that's how we came into the trading business. And after that, there's no looking back. I mean, you know, later on, all the, many of the banks started supporting us. The business was growing. I, the, whole, the, the whole idea was the market was booming at that particular time because Dubai was growing. And probably I would say I was lucky that I was at the right place at the right time, trying to grab that opportunity which was available in the market. I, I want to touch a little bit upon the Kuwait saga because literally it was all over in a matter of few days and we see how things are in Afghanistan at the moment it was pretty much similar yeah it's something like that yeah and talk to me about the sudden change how did you have to come up with the transition and get back on your feet because it must you must have lost quite a lot the same thing what is happening in Afghanistan the same thing happened in Kuwait all the Iraqis they came into the Kuwait and they started in uh, where they started looting everything that means they started uh, going to the supermarket, uh, sitting at the cashier of the supermarket and we have to come and buy uh, from anything from the supermarket. They would be at the cash, depending on the size of the trolley, okay, they will say, okay, 100 dinars, 200 dinars or 50 dinars. You have to pay that money and go. Uh, they used to come to the house with a gun and, okay, kya hai tumhara ghar mein? Uh, means what is there in your house? And they would loot and take it. Uh, so it was a very bad scenario. Now the hour for at that particular time was not what you lose over there. The biggest challenge for us is how to escape from that so that at least we have our life. We were uh, lucky enough through the embassy got the permission because my wife was pregnant and uh, through that we managed to fly on that aircraft. Myself, my wife and my brother uh, immediately we flew and my, son, my, my, my Adil Hubaya, my son was there so he was very young at that time and we came to Mumbai. And I, when I went back home I, I already had 4-5 four, five, five, four, five lakh rupees money in my pocket which I could survive. So now let's start talking about Dubai. Uh, you said that you were here at the right time, right place at the right time. And we're here connecting minds, creating the future eventually in Expo. Talk to us about this journey of doing business in Dubai because there were some dips and there were a lot of rises as well. Talk to us about how the business environment has been and how has it grown? See, there, uh, I've, I've been doing here business for the last 28 years now. And in the last 28 years, I've seen, I think, three times up and down uh, but luckily whenever there is a problem over here the best thing is Dubai Dubai has come out emerged as stronger uh, and that is because the fundamentals of Dubai are very strong and the same way I believe that in Danube also whenever there was a problem we have emerged stronger whether it was that 
the Kuwait war when we are talking about or we are talking about the uh, last Lehman Brothers crisis or we are talking about the now the pandemic crisis uh, everywhere uh, Lehman Brothers crisis also Dubai was the first one UAE was the Dubai or UAE was the first one to come out of it and within one year everything was back to normal when I when we all thought that we have lost so much of money in pandemic also we all thought the same thing that everything is finished now and we don't know what's going to happen and you see now the result in front of you the, the we are all back into action what's been your strategy because we've seen a lot of companies laying off that was the first step they did what was your strategy in the pandemic uh, the first step was creating uh, atmosphere with the staff that nobody is going to be laid off and then second thing the salary is also we were paying 70 percent of the salary for the three four months when we had the completely crisis where nothing no money was coming in so the people company in the working in the company were feeling secured that when everybody is being laid off this company is not only keeping us but also paying uh, basic salary money 70 percent of the salary which is being paid so everybody wanted to do something or the other for the company they were all willing to go out in the market during the pandemic also also to get the collecting the orders because of we are in the construction industry and the expo was you know around the corner so the work was not stopping so the uh, construction companies were open uh, the we were able to get some orders but only important point was my staff had to go and collect the orders now because of the motivation level which was created being among the staff this was uh, happening and we were able to get orders and stocks were always there with us we had enough stocks good enough stock to supply in the market so that's how we came out of that and they were in Danube home uh, luckily what happened was because people were staying home uh, and more majority of the people were working from home they wanted to upgrade the houses so building material did well the uh, Danube home did well yes property we did not launch any property during that one and a half years but we had good stocks which we were able to sell so the good it was like we were consolidating the property where the stocks which were not sold uh, that 10 15 percent of the stock we were trying to sell that stock during that time okay so now there's gonna be a lot of SMEs they're gonna be watching this interview your business advice to them to be handling this pandemic of, of course cash flow was the number one thing but in terms of resilience and building that the, 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 the vibe that you created? I think the most important thing is the motivation of the staff. It's important that uh, the industry should be right and if the industry is right, with that little bit of motivation, with that little bit of uh, fire which we can create amongst all the staff, uh, trust me, it's not that difficult. Every, every phase can pass. So basically try to make sure everybody is happy and um, cut, cut down your expenses, be calm, be cool, don't lose your focus and Try to face the problem rather than running away from the problem. I would say talk to the bankers, talk to the suppliers, talk to your staff. And uh, if you are doing that, uh, I'm sure you can come out of the problem much faster. And what is Mr. Rizwan Sajjan's comfort zone and thinking, well, how do you keep your cool? What, what, how do you have a board, board of directors meeting with yourself? I think I'm a born cool person. You know, you'll hardly see me getting angry. Uh, very, my staff also knows that your boss is angry for something. That means there's something gone drastic. So it's, a, it's an involved uh, gift which has been given to me by the God and I'm able to do that. It's a, not something which I'm doing it. I think I would say it's a gift from the God. Okay. Now I'll touch upon the big event that's happening. Not, not so, you know, it's a stone's throw away from here, very close from where we are. Uh, from the public's perspective, it's the hype. We're excited. Yes, it's going to be a great event. But from your perspective, it's been here for over 28 years. How big is, is this expo? How significant is this event? I think this is going to be a huge mega event, especially after pandemic. This is the biggest event happening in the world and that's happening in Dubai. I mean, hats off to Dubai to pull off and go strongly. And the advantage what Dubai has is today because of the world is most of the world is still close where they are not accepting the tourists so easily uh, many many places are still having that problem uh, they all all the all the people want to come out of it and the way uae has handled the crisis where the uh, you know most important is any every country had this crisis i mean if you look at the vaccination drive today majority of the people are vaccinated and i know the many of our neighboring countries they are still struggling to get the vaccination so this is how UAE is done and I'm sure when you're talking about the expo, uh, they will also, I have a strong feeling that they might come out with the vaccination drive for the tourist also when they come over here. Such a big event happening and we are into the building material industry. So every pavilion or most of the pavilion I would say, uh, we have contributed by supplying uh, to the making of the stands over there. So we're very happy that we are part of it.